Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another video from Tool Travels. Now as you can see it's a beautiful day here in Lviv in Ukraine and I thought I'd get the camera out and uh, just fill you in a bit on what my plans are for the near future. So yeah weather wise it doesn't get much better than this in February in Ukraine it's something like seven degrees which is quite balmy. Okay so I just want to talk about this uh, war situation in Ukraine a little bit. I'm very calm to be honest, I mean I'm not uh, watching the news too much so uh, I'm not uh, freaked out by the hysteria and propaganda. So to be honest I'm um, the kind of person who treats serious situations lightly and uh, not so serious situations seriously so maybe that's something English in me I don't know. So I can imagine the situation if Russia does invade you know, maybe one morning I'll be uh, opening my curtains and I'll look outside and I'll be like, Oh dear, the Russians appear to be here. I think I'm going to pack my suitcase and uh, make a dash for the Polish border. But if that option's not available, then maybe I have to go to the Carpathian Mountains and uh, hide out in a cave somewhere. So yeah, um, Joe Biden has made an announcement saying that uh, all Americans should get out of Ukraine now because if uh, the proverbial does hit the fan then uh, America are not going to evacuate their citizens from Ukraine. Here we go, Ukraine's elite commandos. <laughs> okay guys, so I got some quite uh, exciting news. Yesterday I started my application for my Indian e-visa. So yeah, all being well, in about one week from now, I'm going to go to India. Now, um, I filled out my uh, visa application form yesterday and it was a real ball ache. It took me about two and a half hours. And by the end of it, I almost wanted to cry and uh, tear my hair out. But uh, I got there in the end. It was asking me all these obscure questions. Привет. So can you imagine it? Tall travels in India, you know? I haven't got a proper itinerary kind of figured out yet. Um, I think I'm going to fly into the south of the country, then afterwards fly right to the north, and then uh, Rajasthan, Goa, Mumbai. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll play it by ear. Now, as with most people, when they think of going on holiday to India, my biggest concern is getting the squirts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, historically I've got a little bit of a weak stomach, so I'm going to have to be very careful what I eat and what I drink. You know what, I've got a whole list of concerns about going to India. You know, getting sick, sleeping on dodgy beds, maybe getting bed bugs or something like that, uh, getting mown over by tuk-tuks. But at the end of the day, although I feel very safe and comfortable in Lviv, Comfort's a trap, so I think sometimes you need to break out of that and uh, seek out adventure. All right, guys, so seeing as it's nice weather, I think we should have uh, more of a look around in Lviv. What do you think? Let's go. So here we got some kind of uh, British pub. It's called Winston Churchill Pub. I haven't been in here before, but look, they got a stuffed pig in the window. Oh ho, what have we got here? And we got another set shop down here. So look at this, they got 24 hour delivery. So you can't order a pizza 24 7 in Lviv, but you can order a maid's outfit. Wow, guys, look at this. This is a serious reminder of the dangers of long COVID. So you might not die, but you could end up looking like this poor bloke. I mean, look, his lips moved down to his neck. If he had been wearing his mask, none of this would have happened. Now, everybody, in the past, this uh, building here was very important. You can see it says Cassie, and you have the symbol of the Ukrainian railways. So, basically, uh, in the old days, if you didn't want to go all the way to the train station to buy a train ticket, you came in here, in the city centre, which was much easier. So I remember in the early days when I was buying a train ticket to Kiev, Odessa or something like that, I often came in here and there'd be a big queue 
and you'd have to deal with uh, grumpy babushkas and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, if we look uh, on the other side of the street, there's another empty shop there. So there's uh, a lot of empty premises in Lviv at the moment. I mean, nobody knows what's happening with COVID and war and stuff like that. So I think it'll pick up in springtime though when the tourists start coming back. Okay, everybody, so we've got a lot of uh, fancy hotels that have sprung up in Lviv in the last few years. This one called Gruner. I've never heard of it. Sounds very German. And uh, yeah, it looks very fancy, so I can imagine it's pretty expensive. So, guys, I'm now outside one of the poshest hotels in Lviv. It's called Bank Hotel. Now, uh, last summer we had something of a tourism boom in Ukraine because uh, uh, we had a lot of Saudi tourists coming to Lviv and other cities. Now, they came to Ukraine because it's one of the few countries they could enter because there's a lot of countries that, you know, were locked down last summer. So they were coming here and the people of Lviv were very happy because uh, Saudis, they like to spend the money when they're traveling. And a lot of them have never seen rain before. So, yeah, they were so excited to come to rainy Lviv. Now, also, a lot of these Saudi tourists were just staying inside the hotels in Ukraine and drinking alcohol because, of course, it's uh, forbidden to uh, drink booze in Saudi Arabia. Now, behind me, we have uh, Cat Cafe. And uh, I was just thinking what a great idea would be to uh, get a big dog and take it in there. That can be my next video. Tall Travels takes an Alsatian into Cat Cafe. So, everybody, as we can see, some places in Lviv have still got the Christmas decorations up. So they think to themselves, well, they look nice, so why don't we just keep them up all year? Now, guys, the Columbia store has made a very big mistake here. They put a target on the window. So somebody's come along who's had a few vodkas picked up a brick and decided to throw it at the target and he's done pretty well. I think he scored at least five points there. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to another sunny day here in Lviv, Western Ukraine. Now I wanted to give you a little update about what's going on here at the moment. So yesterday the British Embassy said that all British people should leave the country because they won't be able to provide any assistance should there be any trouble here. So uh, I think a lot of uh, people are heeding that advice so I've uh, heard about a lot of uh, British people and also other nationali nationalities leaving the country. But also, what I noticed in the last couple of days is an uptick in the amount of foreigners actually fleeing here to the west of Ukraine. And the reason for that is because if there is an invasion in Ukraine, then a lot of people see uh, Western Ukraine as pretty safe because uh, Russia is not going to be interested in this part of the country. So yeah guys, like I was saying, um, I've start, started to see a lot of uh, foreigners here in Lviv. A couple of days ago there's hardly any, but now I'm hearing and seeing quite a lot of uh, Americans, English people uh, from India, Turkey, the Middle East, China, and I'm not 100% sure, but I'm thinking that a lot of these people, they're international students who have been studying elsewhere in Ukraine and they're fleeing uh, to the west here for a bit of uh, safety. So my personal situation here, I'm starting to think about the war a little bit more, I have to say. I'm definitely still very calm, so uh, I'm not freaking out and uh, running for the border quite yet. But uh, as, uh, as I also mentioned, um, I'm going to be going to India soon. So I've got my visa and it's a question of when I go. I'm thinking about going in one week, but I might stick around for another two or three weeks here before I go. I'm not, not exactly sure yet. So guys, uh, my plan is if I do flee the country, then it's going to be on a horse-drawn car. I've already made a deal with this guy and he's going to take me to the Polish border by horse-drawn car for 50 quid. <laughs> Wow, guys, look at this big queue for the aquarium today. So, guys, it's difficult to uh, determine whether Ukrainian people are taking this Russian invasion story seriously because uh, Ukrainian people always look serious. <laughs> so, everybody, getting outside of the center of it now. 
Over here we have Peking Restaurant. This has been here for quite a few years, but we can see there's a for rent sign outside. So obviously another casualty of the COVID crisis. It's behind the trees over there. We've got uh, a spa, hotel and a fitness center. Now, the fitness center is called Eurosport and it's the biggest uh, gym in the center of Lviv. Now, the problem is it's a very nice gym, but it's very, very expensive. So we're talking about 100 euros per month plus, unless you uh, pay for it long term, like six months or 12 months and it's cheaper. Now, I once had an interesting experience in this gym. Uh, I turned up to use the swimming pool uh, in my swimming shorts and uh, they didn't let me inside the pool and uh, I asked why and they said oh you need to wear speedos in the pool and I said why can't I wear swimming shorts they're made for swimming and they said oh uh, we don't know what you've been doing in them so we've got a very important landmark here in Lviv now this building used to be called Metro Club it was one of the most famous nightclubs in the country so uh, it was uh, very uh, very popular with Turkish men especially so they used to come from all over Turkey to Lviv just to go to this nightclub now uh, the local people of Lviv had mixed opinions about this place it was you know a bit kind of trashy but fun I can't be too nostalgic about Metro Club to be honest I mean I did go there a few times uh, when I was at a loose end but uh, definitely not one of my favorite places so we're on uh, Zelena Street at the moment you can see we've got a very beautiful building here look at that and uh, on the ground floor there we've got an old star producti so we're seeing less and less of these in Lviv these days uh, in the center they're turning into more uh, Western style shops let's say we got another big beautiful building over there and I'm not quite sure what that is. We've got the old bill here looking for bribes. <laughs> Everywhere you go in the center of Lviv you've got magnificent buildings. Look at this one. It'd be great to have an apartment in there. Again on the other side of the road. Beautiful. And you can see here uh, they've got nets on the balconies and that's to stop the uh, mason masonry falling off and hitting somebody on the head. So instead of fixing them, the cheap option is just to put a net on them. <laughs> i tell you what, Lviv's um, a fast-changing city, but really in the centre of the city, if you come outside of the centre, nothing that much has changed in recent years. I mean, of course, because of Covid, you've had some businesses closed down, but there's been no massive changes so yeah you got many kind of old-fashioned simple shops and this if this was in Plosher Enoch they would have been replaced years ago with trendy coffee shops and uh, gourmet restaurants and whatnot so over the course of the last 10 years the center of Lviv has become more and more gentrified so uh, a lot of uh, Locals are shunning the very central of Lviv, uh, Plosha Renok, because it's getting too expensive for them. So uh, they're staying in their neighborhoods and going to their neighborhood restaurants and cafes. All right, everybody, it's another beautiful day in Sunday in Lviv. As you can see, lots of people out and about enjoying this beautiful weather. Doesn't appear to be much panic on their faces. So guys, President Biden of the United States said that Russia will invade Ukraine on the 20th of February, which is this Wednesday. 
So it's going to happen at 9.42 in the morning and when it does happen, these air raid sirens are going to go off. Uh, 50 grivna for me. Sorry? 50 grivna you have to pay me. <laughs> Joking. No thanks, no thanks. This girl dressed as a big bird, she's been working in this job for many, many years in the vet. I told you there's quite a few tourists in Lviv at the moment. So guys, I'm now outside the biggest nightclub in town called Malevich or Malevich, however you want to say it. So I first came here in 2010 when it was called Millennium Club and at that time it was a Soviet style club, like rough and ready. So uh, I remember turning up, I ended up playing uh, pool and drinking vodka with two local Gotniks. <laughs> but as you can see now, it's a lot more fancy looking. And uh, this opened a few years ago, I don't know, maybe five years ago, and there's a lot of fuss about it in town. It was the place to be. There we go, I love Malevich. And it's got a strip club inside, which is convenient for some people. Not me, of course, because I'd never go into a strip club. So I remember when I was at this club a few years ago and I'd been traveling from Kiev and I had my passport in my pocket uh, from taking the train in my jacket pocket so I checked in my jacket to the cloakroom and when I left when I got home I realized uh, somebody had lifted my passport from my coat pocket so it was a real nuisance to get the passport replaced in those days uh, I had to wait for weeks and weeks to get a new one so. Okay guys, I'm now at uh, a war memorial in Lviv and this was built in the last few years to commemorate those uh, who died on Maidan in uh, 2014. So I believe this is the uh, Heavenly Hundreds as they're known. So we've got uh, pictures of these men and their names died defending Ukraine. Rest in peace. And here we have uh, a beautiful viewpoint to check out the uh, steeples and spires of Lviv. So I'm now at the site of the Grand Synagogue. So uh, it was built in the middle of the 17th century and was reconstructed 
in the 19th century and was destroyed by the Nazis in August 1941. So you can see now it's a kid's playground. There's quite a few old red bricks lying around, presumably. They were from the uh, synagogue. Here we've got some pretty cool street art. Okay everybody, so I think that's about it from uh, Lviv for me today. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. And in the next video I'm going to be updating you on the situation here in Ukraine and also about my upcoming trip to India. So I'm not sure exactly when I'm going, maybe in about a week or so. So I'll keep you updated. So take care of yourselves and uh, bye for now.